Hey guys, recently I stumbled across a video by Drongo from your deadlock talking about jungle and jungle paths. While the video is very well produced and has a lot of good information, I wanted to make a response video about why jungling is actually causing you to lose your games. And I actually wanted to look at the exact game that he put in the video where he's playing seven and talk about all the mistakes that he makes with jungling, in my opinion. First of all, I want to point out that this is not, you know, a diss towards Drongo or anything like that. I just want to have a civil discussion about what is good about jungling and what is bad about jungling. Um, and I think that the video presents jungling a little bit too much as a way to just get ahead, like, fairly easily. When it is a lot more nuanced than that, and there are a lot of other things to prioritize in the game. And to me, it's pretty obvious that Drongo probably has, you know, maybe 150, 200 games in deadlock and still has a lot to learn, which is totally fair and that should not prevent him from making content. But I also think that it's my responsibility and the, and the responsibility of people that have been playing deadlock for months uh, to kind of help you guys with the learning curve and make it so that you learn faster. Uh, so I hope that this video can prevent you from making mistakes that I made when I first started playing Deadlock. Uh, and I probably had, you know, a similar mentality to Drongo when I first started playing. Uh, but a lot of things have changed with my understanding of the game deepening. So I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm just going to skip the laning stage for the most part. Uh, as you can see at the end of the laning stage, he's up, you know, six, 700 souls on the Lash and he got the Lash's tower. Uh, this obviously does put you in a great position to prioritize jungling because since you got the tower and you're seven, uh, you're not going to be, you know, rotating around the map uh, that much, etc. Right. So you're seven. You don't have a lot of ganking potential, uh, especially with the skill build that he's going. He's maxing the ball. So, you know, really realistically, your main use as seven is going to be jungling in this situation. Uh, uh, and so he, he is going to make the right call here at seven minutes to start prioritizing it. One thing that I would do before going straight to the jungle camp is you don't have to be afraid of the lash in this situation. And so I would just push the wave one more time before going to the jungle camp. Um, as you can see here on the lash's wave, the lash is shoving the wave, uh, but Drongo did miss probably three to four creeps for farming this jungle camp and now he's going to the other jungle camp and he's probably going to miss more creeps so if we look at the lash's perspective another creep dies here and there might be more although the lash is pushing so he's probably not going to miss that many but usually when you're jungling you want to avoid missing creeps as much as possible using his ultimate you know is not the end of the world but realistically for the time that he jungled he probably missed like an entire wave and now he's jungling even more uh whereas the wave of the lash sorry let me get the camera up so if the Lash is pushing, another creep is dying, another creep is dying, and then this final creep is dying. So I think the creep count that he's missed is about eight or nine creeps at this point. And eight or nine creeps at this point in the game are worth, um, I think it's around 85 souls or so each. And so if you calculate, you know, you're looking probably at seven to 800 souls. And I honestly highly doubt that he got more than that in the jungle. He probably got a similar amount of value. And so if he just pushed those lanes a little bit better before going to the jungle, he actually would have gotten the value of the lanes and then the value of the jungle. So he definitely spent way too much time in the jungle uh, this early. And he actually probably didn't even get any lead from it. Uh, I think that the net worth difference between him and the Lash is probably exactly the same because the Lash was able to just farm the wave the entire time while Drongo missed about two waves. So that's the first mistake. And in the video, he mentions you want to try to come back to your Guardian. Um, and that is definitely correct. You all definitely want to try to come back to your Guardian. But more importantly than that, you almost never want to prioritize jungling over actually farming the creep waves because the creep waves are more value than the jungle camps on average. Here he goes back to farm. He farms one camp. This is actually perfectly fine. This is a, a good play, right? He's able to farm one camp here. Um, and then he, you know, he's going to go back to the tower. He's not going to miss any creeps or maybe one or two creeps uh, because the Lash pushed the wave. So this is actually a completely fine play. One thing I want to talk about in general before we go over the specifics of the video is that in the video, he talks a lot about how, you know, jungling is your way to get ahead and jungle pathing etc a lot of people have asked me about jungle pathing in the past and i've kind of avoided talking about the subject for one very simple reason and, and, and it's that first of all there's no dedicated jungle role in uh, deadlock and second of all it's that everyone should be farming the jungle camps near them when it's convenient right so here's another mistake that he's making right here okay so we're gonna rewind a little bit and explain this mistake but before i do explain the mistake I want you guys to think in this situation, 
he's gonna push the wave what should he do next right i want you guys to think about that for a second look at the state of the game he's 2k ahead of the lash what should he be doing next here he goes to the zip line now what's the mistake the mistake is actually very very simple and it might not seem like much but this is how you're losing games honestly uh, this game i looked this game is a 57 minute game there's no chance that this should have been a 57 minute game at all so the mistake is that he's going back to farm his own jungle it's 10 minutes and he's thinking about oh let's hit the 10 minute timing okay in reality the 10 minute timing is important but the most important thing at the 10 minute timing is actually the buffs and then the second most important thing in this situation if you're ahead of them is stealing their own jungle so in this situation i probably wouldn't have even gone for the buff and i would have told my teammates to go for it because they're closer to it because i could have farmed as you can see on my cursor i could have farmed the church camp right here and then i could have farmed this other camp close to mid as well and stolen two camps from them and when you steal camps from the enemy side you're getting further ahead and that's a very important concept if you want to win your games so stop farming your own jungle if you're ahead and you can farm theirs always prioritize farming their jungle over yours if you can and in this situation if you're going to go back anyway then here it's 10 minutes um, you need to prioritize the buff like you're right here the buff actually i think got taken or is this a replay bug i'm not sure but at the end of the day I do believe in the video he says like that he prioritizes the um he prioritizes the farm over the buff okay so for some reason there's a replay bug the buff has spawned if he's here there is no reason for him not to grab the buff just to give you guys a perspective the buffs are about as strong as a 3000 cost item so the movement buff for example gives you a bunch of stamina uh, let me just fast forward a little bit because we've got a little bit of a replay bug just give me a second yeah, so the, the movement buff actually gives you a bunch of stamina and it's 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 actually just as good as superior stamina the item so if you're farming having movement speed and extra stamina is just huge and he does end up taking the buff eventually but against better players those players will take the buffs as soon as it spawns and he does end up taking their jungle but once again against better players they would have taken this jungle by now as well he had an opportunity to take it but this is actually a really good play he's ahead he's able to steal their jungle he should have just prioritized it differently earlier. Let's also talk a little bit about, you know, how you can win deadlock games faster. So this game is 57 minutes. Looking at the state of the game right now, they've got a pretty nice five, 6K lead. And a lot of it is on Drongo, who's 11K, right? He's done a really good job farming for himself. Um, he's had a lot of inefficiencies in the way that he's moved, but it's still much better than most of the players that are in this lobby, right? Um, I do want to say that, I mean, I, I looked at track lock. It's not a very good representation of overall skill, but the track lock rating of this lobby was about 700, which for you guys that are familiar with track lock is not a very high score, right? So I don't think that this is a great lobby to also demonstrate, you know, strategies for um, higher level play either, right? He's taking their jungle camp. This is good. The Abrams goes on him. I mean, the Abrams has 6, 6k net worth. I'm not sure why he's running away here. I'm, I'm, he can like definitely kill him. And this is another thing that I want to talk about is like, why is he running when he has 13k and the Abrams has 6k? He could literally just turn around and just murder him. Like, the Abrams items, he's 0 and 3 and he has 0 items. If he uses his stun and he uses his ultimate and he has max ball, that guy's dead. And here he's going to end up doing that eventually under tower, it looks like. Actually, he's just dead. Okay, so this was just an execution error. We're not going to talk too much about it, but... This is something that I see so many people doing is that they don't understand how strong they are and then they just feed. Like, if you look at this Abrams, for example, you need to use your net worth in order to make things happen, okay? First of all, he had 6K unspent. That's a really big deal because he dropped a huge bag, right? And second of all, he could have turned around at any point and killed the Abrams, but now the Abrams went from 6K and now he picks up the bag, he gets the comeback gold and now the Abrams is at 10K. And this is exactly how people lose games from jungling is that they're going to get really fed. They're going to think about the jungle path. They're going to think like, oh, okay, I'm going to be efficient. I'm going to farm these camps at 10 minutes, etc. But then they're not going to do anything when they're three, 4K ahead. You need to buy items that allow you to enable your team to win when you've secured an early lead. You don't necessarily need to take your early lead and just farm with it. If you're already four or 5K net worth ahead of everyone else, that's already enough to just like have impact on the map. And you need to itemize and play like you are a strong character character you need to put pressure on the map rather than just jungle here going to jungle is okay his tower is still up 
and you know you farm these pretty fast at seven now the fact that he has 5k gold i'm not sure what he's gonna buy there's a lot of items you can buy as seven before having 5k that would make it so he would farm these camps a lot faster so I do think that this is a mistake. He could have considered, for example, Tesla bullets, which would have helped him a lot. He could have considered Mystic Vulnerability. Uh, he could have considered, you know, lots of different items. Uh, I'm assuming that he's got some sort of specific item build that he's going, so I'm not gonna like worry too much about it. But to me, saving up 6,200 this early on uh, is, is not like really a great practice uh, in most games. Uh, it's a very greedy play and it makes it so that the amount of impact that you're able to have on the map is very limited. And once again, well, let's see what he buys. Okay, so he buys magic carpet. <laughs> okay, sorry. I don't mean to laugh at Drongo, but I really do not. I mean, I, I guess the magic carpet, the idea is like you get longer duration on your balls and longer duration on your static charge and, and things like that. But it, like, how does this item allow you to get any pressure on the map? Magic carpet is an item that lets you get out of jail free, basically. So you can split push and kind of get out of jail free. So I guess if he wants to push walkers and kind of have an escape, it's nice. But other than that, this doesn't actually allow him to win the game. Right, and this is a little bit of a problem with the itemization, but also with the mindset behind people um, who are just gonna like focus on the jungling a lot is you're not thinking about what is winning the game. And what is winning the game is realistically getting more gold than your opponent. If your opponent is also just jungling, neither of you are gonna win, right? You're both gonna have the same amount of net worth. So jungling is just about getting more opportunities than your opponent. And usually the way you do that is you're gonna pressure waves in order to have space to jungle and limit your opponent's space. And you're gonna try to steal their jungle and farm your own jungle when there's nothing better to do. Farming your own jungle should be in a moment where you're like, hmm, okay, I don't think I can have any impact on the map right now. Uh, and I think that there's a good amount of farm for me in the jungle. I'm gonna farm it, right? Generally, that should be the way you think about it. You should not necessarily be prioritizing the jungle. Of course, heroes like Seven can farm it much better than other heroes, but you know, that just means that you should be like a little bit more willing to go to the jungle. Once again, like itemization wise, Magic Carpet did nothing for him there. And this was just like, we're not gonna worry about the itemization too much because this was, the itemization was not the subject of his video at all. Um, but here, if you look at the soul count, now it's 69k to 82k. So they actually had a significant lead. Most of it was on Drongo, um, but the souls weren't spent. Um, and he did not play in a way that someone that has a lead should play, uh, meaning there was no pressure put on the map. Uh, and then the enemy team just came back like this, right? So I, I just want you guys to avoid making these types of mistakes uh, because this is very, very common in my viewers games. Right? I've reviewed probably over 30 of my viewers games, maybe 40. And I see this all the time, which is people jungling and not applying pressure afterwards. So that's why I had to make this video. I just, I want you guys to understand that applying pressure is extremely important. Objectives are more important than jungling all the time, right? If you can get a tower, that is better than jungling. Uh, if you can defend a tower, if you're able to actually defend it, that is usually better than jungling. If you're able to get the buffs here at the, at the bridge, that is better than jungling. Jungling is just one thing that is going to be on the map. It's an additional resource for you to take, uh, but you should usually be doing it when you feel like there's no pressure for you to be had on the map. So for here, for example, this is actually a fine time to jungle because the waves are decently pushed. I don't feel like Drongo can do a ton on the map right now. And so he can just jungle on this side and it's totally fine. And here he's going to go to the other camp and it's also fine. Uh, or I guess he might go by. Let's see what he buys. Okay, yeah. So the rapid recharge ball build. We're not once again. We're not going to focus on the on the build too much. But here he's going to buy a little bit, and he's still by far uh, the most farmed hero on his team. And so it's very important that he's able to have like impact and fights if he wants his team to have a fighting chance. Um, and here farming this is like super risky. Uh, I do like the idea because he's stealing their jungle, and he has magic carpet, so he's probably fine. So I don't actually hate this. Um, and it is the right mindset that you should be having. You know, try to steal their jungle as much as possible. Uh, here he goes for the ball on the camp. He's gonna push the wave as well. The last thing I want to talk about in regards to the video, and we're not gonna watch this whole match because it's 57 minutes. I watched most of it on my side and a lot of the same points come back, right? Uh, the main thing that I just want to get across is jungling is something that, you know, a lot of your team should be doing at different times in the game. Um, and juggling rotations in general, in general to me, kind of don't take into account the fact that other people on your team are going to want to do it. And depending on the hero that you're playing, of course, it's going to be better to maybe let another hero do it. For example, Seven is a great hero uh, at jungling because he's one of the fastest junglers in the game. Whereas if you take a hero like Mirage, or if you take a hero like... Um, actually, most of the heroes that he has on his team are pretty good at jungling. 
Uh, but if you take a hero like, for example, like Mirage or someone else that's a bad jungler, uh, they probably shouldn't be doing the same quote unquote rotations as somebody else, right? And the reason for that is because they just can't farm it as fast. And if you can't farm it fast, then you're probably giving up too much on the map in order to be doing that. And so I think that's a very important aspect to consider. If you're playing seven, of course, you should put a little more emphasis on the jungle than if you're playing, for example, Mirage. But it's also very important to understand that the way you win the game is not by taking the jungle, uh, but it's actually by applying pressure on the objectives. Um, and if you do take a bunch of the jungle, you have to make sure to be useful to your team. Uh, I see this on Reddit all the time as well, where there are people, you know, seven Infernos, etc., who have like 30, 40, 50 K souls, and they're just kind of like useless and not using those souls to actually be useful uh, because they're using those souls in order to keep farming the jungle with their, their their farming paths or whatever and they're just absorbing the entirety of the jungle rather than absorbing a few a part of the jungle using their slight lead in order to apply more pressure on the map so once again no hate to drongo at all the videos that your deadlock makes are very well produced um but i just felt like i had to get this psa out there because like Man, I you know I don't want you guys to be losing games because people are just like trying to jungle efficiently when in reality there are, you know that's not how you win games necessarily. That's just one tool that you should be using to get further ahead, but you need to make sure that you do the right things surrounding it and that you do it in the right times. This video might have been a little bit all over the place. I just wanted to have a discussion about it. I saw the video earlier and I felt that it was important to address. Anyways, we're not going to watch the rest of the game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Let me know if you have any questions about jungling or anything you'd like me to cover. And I hope you guys have a good day.